Hi, it's Dwyer. It is March 4th, 2024. Gamblersadvisory.com, a free site. Bettingangle.us, a free site. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. Now, let me just make an obvious point here. I think you make your money in the gap between what the public consensus is. And that consensus might involve, you know, fans of a fighter who has delivered for them over a several year period of time. Um, the gap between that and what's really going on, right? Spot what's current, not what's past. Now, Canelo is a first ballot Hall of Famer. No question about it. Plain and simple, even today into his 30s, he is one of the sport's best pound for pound. He has earned his reputation. He has fought many of the toughest guys in boxing over the years, and he's acquitted himself remarkably well. Right? Remarkably well. Well, let me just point out that unless you are a heavyweight, boxing is a young man's game. Let's recall that Hagler left the sport at 32 years old. Now there are at least three guys, we're going to focus on three guys here, who for me, and I'm just talking for myself, would be the betting side of the play against Canelo. I believe they would each be underdogs at the sports book because of Canelo's big reputation and all he has accomplished in his career. But I believe each of these three has at least a 50% chance, at least a 50% chance of beating Canelo outright. Let's go through the three. The first is David Benavides. Right, folks? I don't say this lightly. You hardly ever hear me say this. But Benavides is a boxing savant. I want you to focus on the David Lemieux fight. Like Canelo, Lemieux has a great left hook. It's spectacular, folks. Let me, um, let me just say, Benavides disables David Lemieux's left hook early. <coughs> Fight doesn't last that long. But it's clear as you watch the first round that Benavides is aware of all Lemieux can do. And he has that left hook prioritized and defensed. I believe he would disarm Canelo's left hook. He has other advantages. He's bigger than Canelo. He has a longer reach. Like Canelo, he is very two-handed. He would know not to go searching for Canelo's head, something Danny Jacobs did not figure out until it was too late. Benavides also is one of those rare guys who might actually be able to flush Canelo onto his back foot. Were it not for Caleb Plant moving away from Benavides and for six foot two inch Ronald Gavro, who seems to have Benavides' number in terms of being able to go the distance against Benavides, you would have to go back to 2014 for a Benavides fight that went the distance. Right, folks? Figure Benavides out. I know he likes to look tough in interviews. I know he often doesn't comb his hair until fight night, right? Understand, this guy is a boxing nerd. He studied the sport, right? He would be in against Canelo. He would know. Straight right hand, left hook, can defend himself coming into the pocket, hard to hit in the head. He would have all of that figured out. And he'd be throwing uppercuts. He would be pivoting in the pocket. He would be testing Canelo's pocket. He would be tying up Canelo's left hand. 
I think Benavides is the betting side of the play against Canelo. The second is middleweight Hamza Shiraz. Right, folks, he's an inverted southpaw with one of boxing's best jabs. Right, think Oscar De La Hoya. The question is whether Canelo would be able to get by the jab. I don't think he would. I think Shiraz is able to maintain distance. Right? Going back in history, I've compared Shiraz to Thomas the Hitman Hearns. I want people to closely study that Hitman versus Roberto Duran fight. Right? Duran, like Canelo, excellent inside. Right? Excellent inside. Duran, like Canelo, better defensively than you thought. Right? If you want to see Duran on his back foot outside fighting a guy, look at Duran against Duran Barkley, who beat Thomas Hearns twice. But understand, Duran had no shot on Thomas Hearns. Because Hearns had a great jab. Hearns is fainting before throwing the jab. Right? Hearns is a hard hitter. Hearns is actually on his front foot hunting down Roberto Duran. I believe that's what would happen if Hamza Shiraz were to fight Canelo. Don't be fooled, too, by Shiraz's humility. Right? Shiraz, I believe the people in the UK know who he is. He knows who he is. Right? He believes he's the best. He believes he empties the room. He's gotten boxing awards understand he's one of the best prospects in the sport right don't be fooled too by the fact that he's a middleweight he has the longer reach than Canelo he has ring coverage not only is he taller than Canelo right he knows how to use his height and he is actually a stalker right I think I think Shiraz would be the betting side of the play against Canelo now, the third fighter is going to raise some eyebrows here, right? Terrence Crawford. He has better legs than Canelo. More importantly, and this is very important in thinking about Terrence Crawford, he can pick his angle, right? Crawford is ambidextrous, and he's more than ambidextrous, right? He isn't just a guy who can switch to orthodox, right? Crawford looks like a natural southpaw. But he can tailor his approach to his opponent. Now, apart from weight, he's roughly the same size as Canelo. Like Benavides, and this is really what's needed against Canelo, Crawford is a deconstructionist, right? He'll know Canelo's habits and will be prepared for that because that's who Crawford is in fight after fight. In other words, Crawford is the opposite of the fastball pitcher. He is Greg Maddox, right? If you're a baseball guy, he's the guy on the mound who knows that even though you're a 330 hitter, you have a problem with curveballs on the outside corner of the plate. And Crawford will throw curveballs. If he were in football, he'd be Bill Belichick. Right? He forces you, if you're a righty, to, in a sense, fight left-handed. Right? I think Canelo can be solved. Again, great left hook, straight right hand, great defense, can fight low, likes to go to the body. I believe a guy with better legs, let's say Terrence Crawford, who actually isn't an ambush fighter like Jamal Charlo, Right, but who is a closer? Who isn't trying to surprise you? He's just trying to deconstruct and neutralize you. Would be able to give Canelo a hard time. Let's hope we get that fight because of what happened in the Jamel Charlo fight. I believe there are going to be a lot of people out there who look at the weight gap, the gap in their histories. Right, Crawford has been fighting at 147. Before that, he was undisputed at 140. And here's Canelo, right? A guy who 
was the 175-pound champion after beating Kovalev, who unified, became undisputed at 168. And they're going to say, hey, we've seen this before. We've seen Canelo hunt down Charlo. Why is he not going to be able to hunt down Crawford? Folks, I believe one of the secrets to Terrence Crawford is the fact that his game does not fully translate on film. He's not a freak athlete, right? This is the guy who you see him on film, you say, look, he's not that fast-handed, right? The only giveaway with Crawford is if you actually look at Crawford fights one after the other, there's going to be that moment where suddenly the light bulb goes on and you say, wow, is this the same fighter I just saw fight in that other fight? Then you're going to notice that Crawford is a different, <laughs> I mean, honestly, Crawford's a different guy in every fight. And against Canelo, I believe Crawford would let Canelo come after him. I want people to go back and look at that Yorkese Gamboa fight. Gamboa walks into a Crawford uppercut. It's clear, looking at the film, that Crawford had it planned. Right? Go back and look at that fight. The announcers were caught off guard by it. Crawford, who looked like he could not handle Gamboa's hand speed, was prepared for Gamboa. He ended that fight by stoppage. Now, all of that said, Canelo is still a superstar. And I believe he beats Jaime Munguia, who's unbeaten. Right? Understand, here the line should be closer than it should be. In other words, um, the public is going to look at Jaime Munguia's performance against John Ryder. And they're going to say, wow, you know, Munguia knocks this guy down multiple times. Ryder's in trouble. Ryder's own corner thought he was in trouble. Then they're going to compare that to the Canelo fight. Canelo does drop Ryder. But in the later rounds, Canelo had some problems, didn't he? Right? And people are going to say, wow, Munguia, unbeaten record. Forget the fact that Munguia hasn't exactly been fighting great fighters, has he? Right? Who are the best guys Munguia has fought? Derevianchenko, by the way, two judges had Munguia winning that fight by one round. Think about that. One round. Right? John Ryder... Understand, when you look at Canelo, Canelo's fought Mayweather. Canelo's fought Golovkin. Canelo's fought Cotto. I've just named three Hall of Famers. And I haven't even gotten to the 168-pound weight class. Right? Canelo has fought Callum Smith, Billy Joe Saunders, Caleb Plant, Kovalev, Bevel. I mean, the point is, Canelo has fought vastly more guys than Munguia. Let me point out, too, that Gabe Rosado, very tough fighter, right? But let's just say Gabe Rosado is easier to find in the ring than Canelo, right? Canelo, I'm looking for a 5'8 guy who can actually fight out of a crouch, who can hide his head without having his hands up, but who skillfully has his hands up and can make you miss as he's collapsing the pocket. Right? If Gabe Rosado went the distance against Jaime Munguia, I'm guessing Munguia is going to have much more trouble with Saul Alvarez. Both guys hit hard. But unlike Munguia, Canelo is defensively blessed. He's much shorter than Munguia. Munguia is a six-footer, folks. A six-footer at 168. Canelo, by contrast, is 5'8". Right? Let me just say, too, that Munguia, primarily a hooker. So you know where the punches are coming from. Canelo, by contrast, can actually throw straight punches. His left hook is one of the best in boxing. He can certainly throw hooks with both hands. 
but he can also straighten up on an excellent straight right hand. He can also get low and start riddling your body. Understand, if you can't get Canelo off your body, you're finished. Munguia, you haven't seen it in a lot of fights. The Revianchenko fights him low, has success, goes the distance against him. The Revianchenko does not hit remotely as hard as Saul Alvarez. Understand, don't let the pretty face fool you. Canelo is one of the hardest punchers in the sport, pound for pound. Right? We don't know it because he doesn't act like a puncher. Right? Jili Zhang walks in a room. He has swag. You look at him and you understand, okay, this guy's a puncher. Right? Anthony Joshua, you see his fights. You see his attitude. You understand AJ is a puncher. Right? Canelo just looks like he's enjoying the moment and he's low-key. You know, the real Canelo comes out only once in a while. Canelo thinks he's the best. You saw that at the Danny Jacobs weigh-in. Right? But Canelo has figured out that if he's low-key, if he's friendly, then he's one of the premier ambassadors for the sport. Don't be fooled by any of that. Canelo's real calling card is his punching power and his defense. Now, while Munguia is also a blessed puncher, and I know Freddie Roach is going to disagree with this, but Munguia is defensively naked at times. He's the puncher who loads up on punches and stuff like that, and if he's fighting someone who can dodge the punch, and that's what Canelo does. Right? Canelo, by the way, has a very good back foot. You hardly see it because he hardly needs it. Right? I believe there's going to be a moment in this fight where Munguia, who's really front foot heavy, tries to load up on shots against Canelo. Canelo lets him throw the shots, ducks under it, blocks the shot, parries the shot, and then is going to have a wide open, wide open shot on ending the night and is going to do so. I'm expecting this fight to end by stoppage. The way I'm playing it, I expect Canelo to win the fight. I believe Munguia only has a puncher's chance. Right? Sure, I'll agree. A blessed puncher like Munguia, if he lands on you, you're finished. Munguia only has to be right once. But the same can be said about Canelo. In a fight between two heavy-handed guys, I'm going to go for the guy. <laughs> I'm going to go for the guy with the much better defense. Folks, Canelo's not above average in defense. He's blessed in defense. He's one of the best defensively. Right? One of the best. By the way, Canelo has never been stopped. And it's a bit jarring because Canelo has fought punchers like Kovalev. Right? Think about it. Canelo fought Callum Smith. I understand Smith gets hurt during the fight. I'm not going to blame Canelo for that. Right? But Canelo has fought guys with punches. Canelo fought Cotto. Right? Now, granted, I'm one of the few people who believes that Cotto did better in that fight than you know, the, the public believes, right? I think Cotto may have won that fight. But the bottom line is, Canelo did not get knocked down in that fight. Right? He's fought heavy-duty dudes. And I don't recall him hitting the canvas. Now, it's true. The Jaime Munguia side of the ledger will say, hey, our guy hasn't been stopped yet. Folks, somebody's getting stopped in this fight. One of the plays I'm definitely going to look at is the play that this fight does not go the distance. Right? I think Canelo wins it. I'll hedge the play with Munguia by KO. When the actual odds are released, we'll be back on here talking about the fight and props and stuff. One of the props I'm looking at, 
is that the fight doesn't go the distance. Folks, you're talking about Canelo against a front foot heavy opponent. Understand the last Golovkin fight. Golovkin gives away the first half of the fight because he understood, and this is Golovkin, very heavy puncher, future Hall of Famer, right? One of the best middleweight champions in history. Look at his record at middleweight, knockout streak. But even a puncher like Golovkin understood, I can't assert myself the first half of this fight because if I do, there is no way I make it to the end of it. Right now, that's a vet. That's a guy at the end of the road. That's a guy well into his 30s. You and I know Jaime Munguia thinks he's unbeatable. Jaime Munguia is the young guy who's looking at Canelo as if Canelo's a senior citizen. Right? Jaime Munguia is not going to give away the first six rounds. His attitude's going to be, look, I got more than 40 wins and no losses. Who are you to tell me a puncher with youth on my side that I shouldn't go hunting for this senior citizen dude who's on the way out who had a tough time against a guy I just dropped several times in a fight. Whose corner was waving the towel at the end of the fight. Right, folks, I'm just telling you, boxing might be a young man's game, but going after Canelo early in a fight is downright foolish. I'm expecting a stoppage here. I think the old man wins it. I'll be looking at other uh, uh, props. I'll agree that Munguia has a puncher's chance. That's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let me hear how you're playing it in the comment section of this YouTube video. Thanks for stopping by.